Good morning. Welcome to Webster Presbyterian Church. Those of you that are worshiping in person, we are glad you are here. Wherever two or more are gathered, God is with us. They're here in this place, so let us worship God. And we welcome any visitors today, and we hope that you find this service meaningful and thought-provoking. So please come and introduce yourself to one of the worship leaders after the service so we can greet you personally. And of course, a welcome to all the pe those who may be watching on YouTube. If you have questions about our church, please call the church secretary and leave a contact number and a worship leader will return your phone call. And so now, remember, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We have a few announcements today. The first one is that on Sunday, March 27th at 11.30 a.m., there'll be a meeting for all interested in learning more about Webster Presbyterian Church, Presbyterianism in general, or joining WPC as a member. And those who decide to join WPC will be welcome to membership on Easter Sunday, April 17th. Anyone wishing to join this meeting, please let one of the pastors know or WPC Secretary Liz Geyer. And now um, Jennifer Carr has an announcement to make. Good morning. Um, Wednesday night dinners are returning. <laughs> Wednesday, March 23rd is the first dinner, same times, 5.30 to 6.30. There are going to be a work in progress because out of the three cooks, there's only one of us that's still cooking, unless I get some volunteers. So we're still looking for volunteers that would, might be interested in, in a salad bar, still looking for folks that like to cook desserts and bring them up here and drop them off. Um, let me see, what else was it? The only thing we are changing up a little bit, we, you will be required to wear a mask and gloves only on the serving line. And we'll provide the gloves and then you can toss them out. But I just feel like for safety issue, this is the way to go. So come and join us on the 23rd. It'll be uh, hamburgers and all the fixings menu. Salad bar will be littler than it was and uh, we'll probably have some good desserts. So I hope to see you then. We are all aware of the situation that is going on in the Ukraine and would like again this week to remember all those who have been uh, in danger, um, killed, and wondering what is going to happen next. And so we would like to say a prayer. So we light the candles for Ukraine, for those injured or dead, those coping with hunger or trauma, and for world peace. Good morning. Uh, so uh, we're here to speak about the three organizations that uh, we're organizing a fundraiser for in Ukraine to help with all the horrible things that are happening there. Uh, but first, uh, there is a greeting that has been sent to us from Ukraine from one of the members of one of the organizations that we'll be supporting. So let's take a look at that greeting now. Дорогі мої брати і сестри, вірні його служителі, мир вам. Ось вже шостий день, як я зі своєю сім'єю та моїми друзями виїхали з наших київських будинків. Те, що у нас на серці, це не можна описати. Біль, сльози, переживання, невизначність та найголовніше – емоційна нестабільність. Але завдяки вашим посиленим та численним молитвам ми рухаємось далі, при цьому не знаючи, що буде за годину. Чергова ніч була неспокійна в мене. Багато моїх друзів, що залишилися в Києві, писали мені і просили молитися за них, щоб Бог захистив українських воїнів, і вони могли відбивати напад. 
Мій друг пастор біля Києва постійно писав мені про молотовну підтримку, тому що біля церкви йдуть бої. А в церковному будинку члени церкви та мешканці селища. Вони вистояли цієї ночі. Слава Богу! І таких повідомлень було безліч за всю ніч з Харкова, Чернигова, Запоріжжя, Маріуполь, Ірпінь, Київ. Позичний лідер, який залишився біля Києва, попросив мене допомогти вивезти його сім'ю з п'яти людей. Тому що біля їхнього селища підірвали, підірвали нафтовий завод. І таких історій дуже і дуже багато. Це реальність на сьогодні. Я сердечно дякую Богу за його милість над моєю сім'єю та мудре розуміння, що потрібно було їхати в той момент, коли це було можливо і безпечно. Дякую за його милість у всьому, і що досі він зберіг наше життя. Хоча були тяжкі випадки на дорозі, коли ми могли потрапити в аварію через те, що всі, хто від'їжджав, поспішали це зробити якнайшвидше. Але Бог нас зберіг. А значить, у нього є плани на наше життя. Дякую йому. Дякую. Дякую йому за таку милість. Дорогі служителі, хочу надихнути кожного. Служіть йому, коли є така можливість. Проголошуйте Євангелія, поки є така можливість. Служіть один одному. І нехай Бог збереже і благословить кожного з нас для місії, яку Він поклав на нас. Молиться за припинення війни, за мир у моїй країні, за тих, хто залишився в містах, які зараз йдуть обстріли, за мир і спокій та емоційну стабільність у моєму серцю. З нами Бог благослови кожного з вас. So that was Vitaly Bolgar. Uh, we actually met in Kyiv uh, last fall. I went there with a team that does art and uh, helps various communities around the world use their own arts and their own music in worship. Uh, so we went there for a completely non-war reason. We met with him and that's his mission is to do that and uh, use worship and music that is local to Ukraine. However, now the organization that he, he has worked for, now they're evacuating people from Ukraine, from all the cities that are being bombed. And so the, the ministry had to do a very quick turnaround and become a completely different thing, but still serving and trying to rescue people. So one of the three efforts that we're putting forth is to raise funds for a van that will help get people out. They had a van. But almost every day I get news from him that, you know, we were evacuating and uh, we, had, we were on, on a safety, safety corridor, but then people were just being uh, shot um, as they were trying to evacuate. And so the vans break down and they have to be replaced pretty quickly. So that's one of the three organizations that we'll be sponsoring. And this fundraiser has been launched already. I ask you to please consider donating today to Webster Presbyterian Church, but be sure to put Ukraine in the memo line. Or you can also uh, donate online on, at WebsterPresbyterianChurch.org, and also when you donate through PayPal there, write Ukraine so to, that it gets to the right place. And again, this is a very urgent fundraiser, as you can imagine, with every day that we wait, uh, more uh, people are not saved that could have been evacuated. So there are two other organizations that we're sponsoring. Uh, Nan will speak about one of them and Lenin will speak about the other. Nan, would you Good morning. Take my mask off and put my glasses on. Uh, I'm speaking today about World Central Kitchen. They started with a simple idea. When people are hungry, send in the cooks. Not tomorrow, but today. Uh, since the day after the attack from Russia began, World Central Kitchen has been serving meals to thousands of families, escaping the violence in Ukraine, and people still remaining in the country. Their WIC's response to natural disasters, man-made crises, and humanitarian emergencies around the world, it's a team of food-first responders mobilizing with the urgency of of now to get meals to the people who need them the most. Deploying our model of quick action, leveraging local resources, and adapting in real time, we know that a nourishing meal in a time of crisis is so much more than a plate of food. It's hope, it's dignity, 
and it's a sign that someone cares. Thank you. Hello. My name is Leonid Lansman. Uh, I have friends both in Ukraine and Russia, and I uh, talk to them every other day. It's very emotional to me, too. So uh, what Russians are doing in Ukraine is horrific, brutal, and unconscionable. Imagine, in, like in Houston, several disasters happening simultaneously. Tornado, flood, rain, snow, freezing temperatures, loss of power, water infrastructure, plus constant barrage of Russian artillery, rockets, and aviation. Ukrainians need meals, medicine, clothes, shelter, transportation, donations, and ideas. Uh, I represent one of the organizations that you are going to donate if you, if you wish today. Within hours of the invasion on the 24th of February, a, a Ukrainian-American software engineer, Artur Kulian, set a website, ukrainenow.org. The website is trying to become an Amazon or Craigslist for volunteers with no overhead whatsoever. By now, 2,400 volunteers registered. Um, the, this nonprofit organization connects Ukrainians who are looking for help with people around the world who want to help. So today, when donating to the church, uh, you are donating to, to this organization automatically. We, we just pass it over. Or as an option, if you wish, you can go to their website and either donate directly or you can register there as a volunteer and they will match with people who really need the help that I listed. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for your thoughts, for your prayers, for your concerns. All the details are in the bulletin. And again, be sure to put Ukraine in the memo, and it will, the money will go to all of these three organizations that we've spoken about. Thank you. Thank you all for that um, presentation and for providing us with this information. I do appreciate it. And let us remember, in everything and through everything, God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Please join me for the call to worship. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Alleluia. Praise the Lord. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before God's presence with a song. Know this, the Lord alone is God. We belong to the Lord who made us. We are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. Enter God's gates with thanksgiving. Go into the holy courts with praise. Give thanks and call upon the name of the Lord. For God is good as is everlasting and whose faithfulness endures from age to age. Let us pray. Creator God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. When we look at the heavens, the work of your fingers, what are humans that you are mindful of us? And yet you have blessed us beyond measure. Truly our cups overflow. We give thanks to you with our whole hearts. We will tell of all your wonderful deeds. How majestic is your name in all the earth. Amen.
Our poem today was written by Robert Frost. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep. If anyone says he is without sin, the truth is not in him. All we, like sheep, have gone astray, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Let us confess our sins together before God and one another. O Christ, in whom the final fulfillment of all hope is held secure, what I so wanted has not come to pass. So let me remain tender now to how you would teach me. My disappointments reveal so much about my own agenda for my life and the ways I quietly demanded should play out, free of conflict, free of pain, free of want. You are the king of my collapse. You, but what I do not even know how to ask, not my dreams, O oh Lord, not my dreams, but yours be done. Now let us go to God in silent confession. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Amen. the good news. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive our sins. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. We are a forgiven people. Amen. said, one more commandment I give you, that you love one another. May the peace of Christ be with you. Let us pass the peace. Good morning. It is time for children's time, and I don't actually see any children in 
our sanctuary here this morning. So those of you at home, I would like to share with you a little message. I have some things here I'm going to add to my wardrobe. I have a little party hat. And uh, and I use these because I remember, or I use these because once a year we have birthday celebrations at our house, and we do this to remember and celebrate the people who are having birthdays. And during that time, we invite friends and some family members, and we also have something special that we eat during our birthday parties, which is birthday cake. And then um, I use that because now as we gather here around our table, this is Jesus' table. And instead of inviting just a few friends and family, he invited everyone to his table. And instead of cake, we used bread and juice to help celebrate and remember Jesus. And I want us to go ahead and say our little verses, so repeat after me. This is Jesus' table. He set a place for me. Everyone is welcome to come and taste and see. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for Jesus' table and inviting everyone. Help us to remember Jesus. And keep them in our heart. Amen. Please join with me in the prayer for illumination. Lord, before this world's day even began, your word was in the beginning, and it was with you, and it was you. The mystery of that brings us to our knees. Yet today, you allow us to open your word and know you better. And so we ask that you would give us eyes to see and ears to hear and hearts open to your spirit as we seek you. Amen. The first reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verses 32 through 35. Let us hear what God is saying to us today. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, Give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Thank you, choir. That was so moving. It was beautiful. Thank you. The sermon scripture is a reading from Paul's letter to the Corinthian church. Listen to what God is saying us today through these very familiar words from 1 Corinthians 11, verses 23 through 26. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, The cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this, and as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is the word of the Lord. Some years ago, I came across this little book, Crow and Weasel, by Barry Lopez. This fable of self-discovery follows Crow and Weasel on their quest for knowledge and self-discovery. As they make their journey through the unknown wilderness to a place farther north than anyone in our tribe had ever been before. On their return from the journey, Crow and Weasel meet the badger. Badger welcomes them, feeds them, and asks them to tell her all about their adventures. And so Weasel begins to recount their adventures in the far north. But it wasn't too long before Badger interrupts, saying that in order to express himself more fully, he must stand up straight and get his posture right. And so Weasel starts again, and Badger interrupts again. Badger wants more details. He, she wants more clarification. And so the pattern continues, Weasel starts talking, Badger interrupts, and Weasel starts getting a little bit annoyed. But what Weasel had yet to understand is that what Badger was trying to teach him was not only how to tell a story, but how important stories are. And as Weasel and Crow are about to leave, they are left with this advice from Badger. I would ask you to remember only this one thing. The stories people tell have a way of taking care of them. If stories come to you, care for them and learn to give them away where they are needed. Sometimes a person needs a story more than bread to stay alive. And that is why we put these stories in each other's memory. That is how people care for themselves. One day, you will be good storytellers. Never forget these obligations. I was attracted to this story because, well, I love stories. Stories are important in our lives. Our stories and how we remember Moments in time mat matter not only to us, but to those around us, whether we realize it or not. And during the season of Lent, we are focusing on communion, practicing and participating in a church sacrament that has been enacted in many different ways under many different circumstances and in many traditions over the centuries. And this started me thinking about what we are saying through our acts of worship, and specifically communion. What is the story that we want others to know? What is it, is it about this act of partaking in the bread and the cup that carries us through life? It was during this time of reflection on the sacrament that I recalled several meaningful and significant communion services throughout my life. 
One such moment was during a worship service of a conference I attended. It was not walking to the front of the sanctuary to receive communion that got to me, nor was it having someone breaking the bread and giving it to me that I found suddenly moving. But what moved me, what astounded me, was what I was given. It wasn't a morsel. It wasn't a little tidbit of bread that the pastor gave me. It was a chunk of bread, a big chunk of bread. And as I received the bread in my hands and heard the familiar words, this is the bread of life, all I could think was what a big piece of life it was. <laughs> this wasn't something you just dip in the cup, chew once and swallow. No, this piece of bread, this piece of the bread of life was going to require some effort. I looked at the bread, dunked it in a cup full of juice, put it in my mouth, and started chewing. And chewing. And I was still chewing the bread as I went back to my seat. And then I smiled. I liked what I had just experienced. I liked how I felt. I felt full, full of the bread of life. And what I learned from that experience is that if we believe God's desire is for us to live life abundantly, more abundantly than we can imagine, then why don't we break the bread of life with abandon and drench it in the cup of salvation? That particular service was a good reminder that it is God's love pouring out and spilling over. It is God's grace that is overflowing, soaking everything in sight. And a good reminder for me to soak up God's love and grace with a full serving of the bread of life. It is a table from which you should never leave hungry or thirsty. As Keith mentioned last week in his sermon, it is often moments when a family gathers around the bedside of a dying family member when prayers are said and hymns are sung, when last rites are often administered, that are especially poignant and meaningful. And I can still vividly recall the home communion service we had with my mother less than a week before she died. This was something my father really wanted. My father loved communion. And so I made the arrangements with church and we all gathered at my parents' home one Sunday afternoon. After some small talk and sharing of stories, we began the communion service. The pastor asked my father if there were any particular scripture verses he would like read. At first, dad said it didn't matter, but then he mentioned he always liked the passage from Ecclesiastes. For everything, there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. Amazingly, it was the same text we had read in church that morning. The words were true, for this was the season of death, the season of crying, and the season of sadness. And so we prayed and we listened as scripture was read and the familiar words of the communion service were spoken. The bread was broken, the juice was poured, and the five of us shared communion around our kitchen table, a table where so many stories and so much love had been shared over the years. I watched as my father dipped a piece of bread in the juice and asked my mother to open her mouth. The fact that she was able to respond to that was amazing. And dad put the juice soaked bread in her mouth and I watched as she swallowed it. That's when healing began. 
I want to think that healing began for my mother as she swallowed the bread, surrounded by people who loved her. I know it did for me. The empty place inside of me was being filled by bread and juice, filled with God's love and grace. The bread of life, even in the shadow of death. And it was that bread of life, which was the last nourishment my mother had here on this earth. And of course, it is hard to discuss memorable and meaningful communion services without contemplating one unique to this community, Lunar Communion. I was all of 11 years old and while I didn't understand until many years later all that had taken place to bring something like that to pass, I knew enough to realize even then that this was a big thing. And my most profound memory of that first Lunar Communion occurred at the end of the service. I couldn't tell you what hymns were sung that day or what the sermon was about, but what I do remember is with that there would be no benediction that day until all of us, all of us had taken communion. It would only be then, only after all of us had the opportunity to share in the bread and the cup that we were to say our own benediction. And that struck me as somehow significant even though I was only 11 years old. And so we all sat in front of our television sets that day and waited and watched and listened and at the appropriate time gave our benediction, our blessing, to a service of worship that began in Webster, Texas and concluded on the lunar surface. My understanding of God's vastness expanded on July 20th, 1969. On that one day, we had been separated by a distance far greater than I could even comprehend, yet connected by a creator whose touch went far beyond what I had imagined possible. And that is what gives this day meaning for me. Not simply that a member of our congregation took communion on the lunar surface, but that the height and the breadth and the depth and the length of God's touch allows us to celebrate this sacrament together wherever we are, connecting earth and moon and all that lays between and beyond. And finally, just one more story. I think sometimes we take the connectionalism of the Presbyterian Church for granted. I think we all know it's a good thing, although I'm not always sure we understand its significance outside of how we organize and do our governing. But I learned something in the last few months of my father's life, which was spent in Stillwater, Oklahoma with my brother. As I mentioned, my father loved the sacrament of communion and while he didn't talk about it too much, he sure liked to partake in it. And so, before we left the nursing home here to go to Stillwater, our family had a communion service. But almost immediately upon arrival in Stillwater, we had a medical crisis and found ourselves in the ER of the local hospital. And while my brother was dealing with the doctors, I was filling out all the hospital forms. And at the end of one, there was the optional question where you could provide the patient's religious preference. And I was in such a hurry that I almost didn't fill it out, but I did. And I wrote down Presbyterian, and I am glad that I did. For you see, the very next morning when we went to see our father in the hospital, I found out he already had two visitors the night before, the two pastors of the local Presbyterian Church in Stillwater. They had left their cards on his bedside tray. And so when I returned home, I called the Stillwater Church and spoke with Pastor Leah. 
And she was glad I called as they were trying to figure out how someone from Seabrook, Texas, ended up in a hospital in Stillwater, Oklahoma. And after a short explanation, I told Pastor Leah that communion was important to my father, and I asked if she would serve him communion as long as he was in Stillwater. Her response was immediate. Of course we will, she said. And they did. And she was there in the hospital with my brother the night our father died, offering prayers, last rites, comfort, love. It was a reminder that love and comfort and support that a church family can provide knows no boundaries. The sacrament of communion is a connection that transcends time, distance, and circumstances. And whenever we enact and live out this sacrament, God comes to us, and we are reminded that we are people created in God's image, a reflection of God's glory. For it is in the celebration of the Lord's Supper as we remember and reenact the meal shared by Jesus and his disciples that a community of faith is united and finds connection both with one another and with the one who never forgets, the one who never lets go, the one who always remains faithful. And in this coming week, I encourage you to remember a communion service that was particularly meaningful to you. Think about it, and if you're comfortable, share that story with a family member or a friend you might just be surprised at the conversations that arise. And so remember the wise words of the badger. Sometimes a person needs a story more than food to say alive. Amen. And it always helps if you would bring everything up with you when you need it. Now, in our invitation to disciple work, uh, discipleship, if any uh, one of you here today is interested in learning more about our church, church membership, or the Christian faith, please speak to one of the pastors, elders, or ushers at the end of this service. And if you are watching this via video and are interested, please contact our church office using the information that is on the screen. Jesus said, Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Please join me for the affirmation of faith. Let's stand. This is the good news which we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved. If we hold it fast that Christ has died for our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised, and that he appeared first to the women, then to Peter, and to the twelve, and then to many faithful witnesses. We believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus Christ is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He is our Lord and our God. Amen. Please be seated. God of the wilderness, you know the feeling of your world turned upside down. You know the wilderness, and you know the other side. That's why we come to you in prayer, because you are an expert on the muck of the world, and yet somehow you never lose sight of what could be. Somehow, even with temptation ringing in your ears, you hold fast to what is good and lovely and we long to do the same. So today we come to you from paths along our own wilderness journeys, pulling prayers out of our pockets to give to you. For some of us, the wilderness looks like loneliness. 
For others, it looks like addiction or infertility. For some, it looks like failed relationships and dishonesty. For others, low self-esteem and ever-rising fear. And we know that war comes from the wilderness, as does injustice and oppression. And so we pray, just as you spoke hope into your own wilderness days, speak hope into ours. Speak good news, speak of bread, speak of God, and speak of peace. Bundle up our spectrum of fears and carry them out of this desert place and into the land of green pastures and still waters. And until that promised day, until we find ourselves at the edge of the wilderness, kicking the dirt off our shoes and leaving temptation behind, we will keep singing, we will keep dreaming, we will keep a light on and the door open. We will keep praying. Amen. The Lord has given us so much, and so now let us return a portion of what we have received. You may place your offerings in the baskets that are in the narthex to cheer your tithes and offerings. If you want more information about giving, you can go to our website.
ever-present, life-giving God, may these gifts be used to pass on your peace, justice, and healing. Amen. Now let us all say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. God has shown you what is good. What does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? God has made us a free people. We are free. So let's go out into the world and live like it. And to that end, may the spirit of the triune God strengthen and sustain you all through these, throughout these 40 days and into the life that is to come. Amen.
case. <laughs>